Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Big Sky. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's kind of start with... Uh, you have Richard kind of on his revenge tour of sorts. He's trying to uh, get to the bowlers as quickly as possible. He tries to go to through Tanya, which that kind of happened at the perfect, well, not really the perfect timing because Bryce is trying to get info for Jenny as his as her uh, CI. And um, I was almost hoping because Rich, but I guess it's like, right, he wasn't there enough for it because I was hoping for Bryce's sake that later on when uh, when uh, Tanya noticed that like her desk was a little messed up, I was like hoping like she'd assume like maybe uh, Richard had something to do with it. But it's like, well, to be fair, he wasn't in there long enough, and they had their eyes on him the entire time because he was acting weird. And it's like, right, the only person that had been a little suspicious, and she kind of bro broke down some of Bryce's behavior that made her go like, okay, something's something's a little off here. So she immediately knew something was up. So poor Bryce, but we'll get to that and uh, we'll get that to later. But Richard is so desperate for answers to find out what happened to his son. Well, I mean, he already knows what happened to his son, but he's trying to get revenge on all the people that were responsible. So he's trying to get to the bullers directly. Well, his means of going about that was going after Tubbs, which Tubbs already kind of got ran through the ringer this episode because. Alicia showed up because it's like, hey, I actually have a law degree and I know how to kind of get the police to back down because Tubbs kind of fudged and lied about, uh, lied to get the warrant because he believed Jenny, which Jenny had him a good authority of like, yeah, like I know what I found. She just didn't expect them to clean house as fast as they did. So sadly it blows up in their faces and Jenny feels even more motivated. Like, right, we have to get to the bowlers first. That's why she was kind of pushing Bryce to kind of get some more information for her. But once again, he wasn't, you know, I mean, that's the complicated thing about, like, a CI. It's not like they're trained police to know. I mean, because also he can't account for uh, Tanya's OCD to be like, oh, I like I have things in a very particular order. So in the moment things aren't 100% like that, she noticed. So it wasn't something that's 100% on him. That That's something that she would have just picked up in general. So, but it's like, yeah, like, because he, the, the saddest thing about it, too, is, well, I mean, you kind of feel bad for Bryce, but also for uh, Jenny, he was like, the last option that they had. Other than that, like, they're kind of in the wind because can't really 100% count on Travis because he's kind of doing his own thing. And to be fair, he wants to keep Jenny as far away from the, the bowlers. I didn't expect that whole situation. I, I, I apologize. I'm a little scattered brain, and so I'm going to be jumping all over the place. I, I do apologize. But I wasn't expecting that whole beginning to get resolved the way it did. So when, cause when Jenny saw the truck, I was like... I wonder, did she see Dono? Because she probably saw Travis, but she probably didn't see Dono. Or maybe she saw both of them. But her walking over like that. I, I, I thought maybe like she like clocked them and then drive away like everything was fine. But she confronted them. And, you know, it's like, a, hey, what are you guys doing here? Like, oh, you guys here to kind of turn yourselves in? It's like, no, we're just here for a drive. Um, Jenny was kind of pretty sly about... I forgot exactly what she said to Travis. Um... Basically, give me a heads up next time or something like that, and uh, I'll, I'll maybe I'll have some donuts prepared for you or something like that. She made some reference like that, but she was kind of acknowledging, like, right, let me know when you're done kind of going down this path you're going, because she's still trying to pull him out, but Travis is like, no, like, don't try and interfere. No more plans, Jenny. They will kill you, because he's still trying to say, like, his uh, viewers, uh, was it girlfriend or mistress, uh, that he's trying to say that the only reason why he's going after the bowlers is because as I rear, uh, ended up killing her. She was my CI. She was my responsibility. I didn't pull her out when I should have. It's not a one for one, but it is interesting. Like now Jenny has lost a CI. I don't know if she's been in this situation before. Um, I guess that's why it kind of hits Travis later on. When he's like, Oh, there was a CI here and they died. It's like, right, this family has a tendency of getting rid of CIs. But I think there's a lot more to that situation that even Travis isn't aware of. I think that's going to be the real kick in the teeth, but we'll see. But like I said, I, I went on a huge tangent. I, I meant to circle back around. 
But uh, circling back to Richard, he's so desperate to uh, get to the bowlers, trying to get whatever information he can, he goes after Tubbs. Because he's also blaming them. It's like, right, if you had taken care of this cartel in the first place, they wouldn't have gotten such a foothold here, and their drugs wouldn't have spread everywhere, so this is on you. And obviously, you know, Tubbs is like, right, my job, like, if, I, if it were me, I'd let you go on your revenge tour, but I can't let you do that, because my job is to protect you. Because if you go after the bullers, they will most likely kill you. And it won't just stop there. Your entire family will be in danger. And, um, I mean, luckily for Tubbs, he has a cat, and that ended up distracting Richard. But in the process, uh, they struggled over the gun, and he ended up shooting Tubbs. Didn't stick around long enough. He, he, at the very least, did the right thing and called, like, you know, um, an ambulance or, or the cops and such. So it worked out in the end, but still, it's the thing of things have kind of gone this far that I think for him, he knows, oh, he's... You know, he knows this is suicide, but he's just, he's filled with so much regret and pain that it's like, I wasn't able to save my son. He knows this won't bring his son back, like Tubbs said, but it's like, I want to protect any other family from getting destroyed by this, by the bowlers. So, he's going as far as he's going. And while Jenny is looking for him, obviously dealing with the whole Bryce, you know, getting information from her CI, um... You've also got Cassie and the others looking for Richard, but which, to be fair, there's the whole in complicated thing. Uh, things are awkward on that, kind of that almost borderline love triangle, but not really. But it's still like, oh, this is going to get awkward because the constant messages from Jerry, which to be fair, Jerry and Denise were trying to contact him. But I love that Cassie kind of picks up and is like, oh, you and... uh. Jerry gotten close, and he kind of like, right, I'm a, I gotta be honest with you, me and Jerry kissed, we had a moment, and he was like, trying to, you know, and it's like, well, to be fair, like, he liked Cassie first, because he didn't realize how Jerry felt about him, but then it's like, right, me and Jerry spent time together, and it's like, yeah, we kind of both felt it, but, and she kind of gave him an ultimatum, it's like, you have to make a choice, and I think he made one, but maybe he still, I, I think he, I think he has made a choice, because I think even Jerry says, like, no, you two are, are cute together. Uh, because now it's like, when they show up at the office, it's kind of awkward. It's like, oh, did you two carpool together? You could tell how, like, oh, okay, like, how Jerry was. It's just kind of like, aw. And, but it seems like her and Cassie potentially are okay. I brought this up before. I was like, oh, is there going to be a little bit of an awkward Cassie and Jerry thing? It's like, no, we got it now, but I expected it to be earlier than what it was. But Jerry says that it's okay, but I don't... It's, you know, it's still going to be complicated, but I guess it's like, right, it is what it is, you know. I like him, but I know he also cares about um, Cassie, and I, I told him he's going to have to make a choice, and he made his, so. But it seems like they're in a good place. Granted, jumping ahead a little bit, him and Jerry are going to be alone together because they're going to Ohio to go after Scarlett because uh, she popped up into some security cameras and stuff like that in, like, Ohio with her and uh, her daughter, so... We'll see if uh, any conversations or some of these com more complicated conversations kind of continue going forward. So. Cassie, like, there's... Obviously, Lindor's trying to be there for Cassie because Cassie still... She packed up the last of her dad's stuff and she still ended up breaking down afterwards, which Lindor's like, that's perfectly okay. Like, you never know when these feelings are going to strike you. And for her... Uh, She's wondering if she should, like, go, like, talk to someone about, like, go, like, a grief group or something, which Lindor says that he never went to one when it came to his sister, and I, I think it's one of those things that he probably wishes in the long run he had, but he recognizes the good that they could do. It's like, he probably, he's not probably the biggest, he is someone that wears his heart on his sleeve, but I think he is also not the biggest talker, which is, once again, ironic, because he can be the biggest talker. So, I think he probably knows from experience of, like, I didn't really go, and but I know it can help, so I suggest you go and help, you know? But, um, and Cassie and um, Jerry kind of have a similar conversation, uh, because, like, right, like, you know, aside from just the Lindor stuff, it's like, I'm checking in, so how are you? It's like, my dad wanted me to stay, but she had to get away, because things were complicated, even when, you know, obviously she opened up to Lindor about how complicated her mom's death was because it's like right I didn't like she was dying like she was sick like I couldn't say everything I wanted to say it just didn't feel right it didn't feel appropriate so I she still has a lot of that she has to kind of carry on it's just it is what it is in her mind but aside from that it she just needed to get away because she just would have been you know it's just the, how complicated her relationship with her parents were before now and like her and her dad in a better place 
And so she wanted to, but she still needed to get away because, like, right, it just would have all been a constant reminder. But Jenny, uh, but no, um, but Cassie tells her that in the long run, she wishes that she had spent more time with her dad, like, taking more time off, like, enjoy, like, you have your dad still. Take the time, and you guys are in a better place, so take the time to be a family again, be there for each other, especially, you know, continuing going forward, because kind of all each other has in this world now, so. We'll see, uh, what Jerry ultimately ends up doing with that. Maybe this whole Lindor thing. I don't know if it's going to make her... Because she's built a life for herself here. So I'm wondering what she is going to do. Or at the very least, will she just check in and pop in with her dad a little bit more. Or, or at least take more time off to visit him. Because uh, I was about to say, I'm because I, I don't... I don't see her leaving, even with the whole Lindor thing, because this is a life she's built for herself, a job career that she's found for herself there. So I don't see her just walking away. Maybe, but I think it is more so just like, no, I'm going to take time off and visit my dad. So there's all of that. Uh, since I talked about it earlier, the whole poor Bryce situation, because I, I, I think it's so fascinating where Tanya's story has taken her. She's going deeper and deeper down this dark rabbit hole. The fact is that... Um, Ren got her the new outfit. It's like, right, it's about giving you confidence. If you, uh, the, um, the outside reflecting and kind of building up the inside, kind of building up Tanya's self-confidence. And um, obviously, Ren talks about the one time. She's like, the one time I doubted myself. And it's like, yeah, this guy told me uh, uh, a man's office isn't a place for a little girl. Turns out that was a guy that was going to... Um, that stranger, she was like, was someone that was coming to threaten my dad. So he didn't belong in here either. So she's like, from now, from that moment on, I never showed doubt again. I, I was sure about everything I did. And it's like, oh, whatever happened to that guy? Oh, my dad had him killed and chopped to pieces. And Tanya's almost like, oh. And Ren's like, oh, like, is that a little too much for you? But Tanya's like, no, 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 it's fine. And because Tanya ends up having to get her hands dirty later on, which has been this convo for a while when it came to the whole Dono thing. Which, obviously, uh, what was it, Bob? Uh, she was kind of, she didn't help with the torture necessarily, but it was her idea. But this time with the whole um, Bryce situation, which she initially wasn't going to be. He was like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about, even though uh, Tanya had figured him out. Because I guess it's like, right, if you admit it, he knew he was going to end up in trouble, but... Uh, Dono was there, so I was like, oh, that's, that's not good, and the moment it's like, oh, Dono's not going to kill you, I was like, he's going to still kill you, isn't he, I was actually surprised when, when Tanya is actually the one that's like, no, you're my responsibility, and so she takes care of it, and she's like, wow, it's a lot easier than I thought it'd be, and then Dono's smiling, and he's proud of her, I'm like, this is so twisted, he's like, it just comes natural to some people, that's why I was almost like, I said it before, like, I think there's going to be a Dono and Tanya thing, I, once again, the man who kidnapped you, the man you stabbed in the leg or whatever to get away, it's like it's crazy to think about where that started to where you are now. Like, Ren threatened to kill you and stuff like that, but like I think she looks at Ren as a, uh, a, um, a shining example of a role model in the criminal business. Um, a woman trying to pave her own way, so it's, it's weird. So, it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go from there. I'm sure Rin knows about the CI because Tanya told her, but it's like, right, knowing that she handled it themself, herself, now they've also moved other stuff around. They also know Jenny's the one responsible for that because Rin agreed with Tra Travis, um, obviously, uh, when she was saying that, hey, he was saying we shouldn't kill Jenny, killing the cops is going to draw more attention. And she agrees, but once my dad's mind is settled, on, there's kind of no changing that. And Travis keeps making the mistake of he keeps bringing up, like, oh, yeah, like, um, Alicia, oh, what if she had, oh, that's kind of cool, she's a lawyer and stuff like that. Maybe she won't end up like the others. And then Ren's like, that's the second time you've brought that up. You got something to say? He's like, no. She's like, regardless of anything, he cheated on my mom and stuff like that, but my dad is my dad, so watch your mouth, buster. Which, because Ren kind of likes Travis, but, which... Um, if he ever got close to her in that regard, it would just be a means to an end type of thing. But she, she's getting super suspicious of him because he's laying it on a little too thick. Uh, because it seems like Ren doesn't know anything about that. But once again, I maybe Travis is 100% right, but I keep getting this inkling and this feeling that there's a lot more to the story than Travis knows. That maybe she's not necessarily dead and that's going to potentially come back to bite him. In it. I mean, maybe I'm completely utterly wrong. It's like, no... Um, not unless it wasn't 
Veer that did it, not unless it was, like, either Jag or Ren that handled it, or at least gave, like, Dono or uh, Drew the, I, um, the um, go-ahead to make that happen. So either Veer did it himself or one of his children had one of their people. Do I don't know. I just, I just keep feeling like there's more to it than that. Which, speaking of the children, they're trying to decide what they're going to do. They'd actually had a conversation early on about their dad, about why he's doing what he did. Like, cutting up the their drugs, their product like that. And it's like, oh, is he doing it because of the competition back in um, Canada and stuff? And I'm like, but that still doesn't make sense to me why you would do that is it like because you're worried that the? i guess it's like because you're just so desperate to get money because rune's trying to suggest that their family situation is a lot more desperate than their dad lets on that maybe this whole thing is a roundabout way of him trying to like build up their capital or something i don't know like that still doesn't make sense to me why you would like cut the drugs the way he's been doing so now the question becomes well what are they going to do and Rin agrees with Jag where it's like, right, talking to dad will be on, be beyond this moment. Like, he's very stuck in his ways. Like, so he's going to do things his way and there's not going to be any changing his mind. So, Ren is kind of calling for a hostile takeover, which I brought this up before. Not She's going about it a little bit more diplomatic of just like, hey, let's push dad off the throne. Um, I was kind of thinking things were going to get more bloody. Still could, but I was kind of wondering if one of them was going to end up killing their dad. Once again, especially because later on, Alicia ended up having that vi like that dream about like, oh, your children are going to kill you. In fact, it's like your son will. So it seems like we might be getting to that. Once again, still don't know what Alicia's deal is. But like I said, I think she's kind of an insider here to kind of call steer up some chaos. She's just waiting for her moment. Like the people he's running from in Canada, like I said, I think she's connected to them. But we'll see if there's anything that comes about that. But Jag reluctantly agrees to Ren's plan that, like, yes, yeah, something has to be done. So it's like, hey, go, you're going to go pick up Dad. Might be the perfect alone time to talk about everything. Because she's also saying, like, right, Drew's death is kind of on him. He's the reason why this all went down the way it did. Because I think it's also, like, maybe the art, like, probably it's like if the drugs weren't cut with what they were cut with. I mean, he still probably would have overdosed from everything being thrown in his face. But it's like, right, if that, all that fentanyl or whatever wouldn't have been there in the first place if it wasn't for their dad having it cut that way. So maybe that's what, um, probably is like, right, dad running things the way he's been running things. He's unreliable as a leader. Like, we gotta, um, have a changeover in management, essentially. So there's that element. There's also the situation of, I, I, I uh, had skipped over it a little bit, but, Jenny and Cassie, I believe, end up talking to Mason's mom, and it turns out she had kind of fallen off the wagon, because she was taking pain pills because she had fallen off a horse like a few years ago, and she eventually got mixed up in drugs. I'm kind of confused what the connect is in all of this, like, was her son um, Mason going to get drugs for her, or, like, what that was all about? I don't... Because it turns out she was getting drugs and maybe Mason found out about it and got mixed up in it. So Because she was saying, right, Mason's death is kind of on her because I guess she brought drugs into the house. Even though Richard was kind of like, there's no way. And Richard has no idea. And Jenny's like, right, we might want to tell him that because it will bring him back. Because at the very least, he'll still be mad about the Bullers, but at least... He'll, you know, be, I guess won't be as suicidal about killing them and taking them down. He'll realize, like, oh, my wife's going through this. She's blaming herself. I need to be here uh, to help her. And, like, oh, I, what am I going to do? Be mad at my wife for what happened? It was an accident. Like I said, I'm a little hazy on the details in that regard of, like, because they, they wanted to get her drug dealer so that could probably eventually use that person as a CI to go up against the um, bowlers. Because at that same, like, immediately afterwards, uh, around that time, she ended up getting a call from Travis being like, yo, Bryce, your CI is dead. And lo and behold, during all that, who rolls up? Richard pointing a gun at Travis because he wants to see uh, Papa Bowler, which he's about to be on his way. So it's probably going to be a thing of Travis and Ren are going to be in the house, and he's going to hold them at gunpoint. That's probably going to end up tragically, so. 
it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us with this. It is the second to last episode of the season, which I, I, I figured it was like, oh, this is going to be probably, I figured it'd probably be 18, like, last, because I'm fairly certain eight, last season was 18 as well. Um, but I think it's also just maybe they, they needed the time to finish things up, because I was about to say that, yeah, because obviously between last episode and this episode, there was quite a bit of a break, so. Either way, I'm excited to see where all of this ends up taking us next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.